Hi, in this video, I'll talk about B cell activation. If we recall our first lesson, we can understand that B cell development takes place in the bone marrow. Inside bone marrow, there is hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell, which gives rise to lymphoid progenitor. From the lymphoid progenitor, in subsequent stage, late pro B cell, then pre B cell, and immature B cell development take place. At the immature B cell stage, the B cell has its B cell receptor, which is membrane bound IgM. Now, at this particular stage, immature, leaves, immature B cell decide to leave the bone marrow and move into the bloodstream. Now, following the bloodstream, it moves towards the peripheral lymph organs, such as the lymph node. Now, the lymph node has specific anatomical location for T and B cell residents. The B cells reside in the follicles, where they form the germinal centers, whereas the T cell resides in the paracortex. This is like an army base or an army base camp, where for the land troopers and for the marines, there are several army barracks. Nevertheless, inside the germinal center or the follicles, the B cell proliferate and they encounter the uh, antigens there which is taken to them by the dendritic cells and in response to that they would decide to differentiate into antibody secreting plasma cells now the b cell activation could be of could be uh, by two different kind of antigens one type of antigen is called thymic dependent antigen and these kind of uh, cases requires T cell involvement in case of B cell activation. The T cell interacts with the B cell and the B cell has the antigen on its surface uh, bound to the class 2 MHC molecule because it's a antigen presenting cell as well. So it would select the, uh, it would display the antigen to the T cell and the TCR and uh, MHC interaction would give rise to one signal. And another signal is given by the CD40 and CD40 ligand interaction. These two combined signal actually leads to B cell activation in case of the TH dependent antigens. In case of the TH independent antigens, and we will talk about TH independent antigens in a moment, it doesn't involve the T cell help. Most of the cases, it can either be activated by repetitive. Uh, antigens or sometimes it also involves uh, both recognition of an antigen by the antibody and also the uh, the toll-like receptors the innate immune receptors so generally the flagellin which is a part of the bacterial flagella could be a repetitive antigen it cross links a lot of membrane bound MIgG and that gives rise to the signal for B cell activation. Whereas the bacterial lipopolysaccharide LPS can also serve as an uh, T independent antigen and leads to B cell activation. However, B cell activation is strong, stronger when uh, it involves the T cell help. Now, be it a TH dependent B cell activation or TH independent B cell activation, both the cases, the B cell re entered the cell cycle because generally the immature B cells are at G0 phase. So they re entered the cell cycle at G1 and from there they progress G1 to S, they, they increase their genetic material by DNA replication at that stage and thereby they proliferate in number. Now let us look at what happens inside the lymph node and what are the process of B cell activation and what happens just after the B cell activation. What does the B cell activated B cell become and what is its function? So we are now at the paracortex where the T helper cell is helping the B cell to get activated and it's giving the signal of activation to the B cell and the B cell then would either become a specific subtype of plasma cell which would secrete antibody and that would leave the lymph node and go to the circulation. This is one possibility. But there is also other possibility where it would enter the B, uh, follicles and there it would proliferate making more B cells 
and eventually they would differentiate into antibody producing plasma cells. Now let's look at this process in a lot more details. So inside the germinal center, there are two regions. One is the dark zone, one is the light zone. And this demarcation is based on the density of the cells. And that's how it looks like in a HNE staining. So inside the dark zone, there are so many B cells which are proliferating and dividing. These B cells would either have very high affinity interaction or it would have very low affinity interaction towards an antigen. If the B cell has very low affinity towards an antigen, then it would undergo apoptosis. But uh, these proliferation of these B cells in the germinal center is aided by the follicular dendritic cell. Follicular dendritic cell mainly secretes B cell activation factor, which is a signaling ligand of NF kappa B family. And the receptor is NF kappa beta family receptor. And this signaling leads to proliferation and maintenance of these uh, dividing B cells in the germinal center. Now, the cells which have very low affinity towards antigen, they also get a chance to uh, increase their affinity towards the antigen. If they can do that, then they would survive. If their affinity towards an antigen is rectified, then they would eventually uh, differentiate into a plasma cell. Otherwise, they would die by apoptosis. Now, inside the germinal center dark zone, the proliferating B cells is undergoing a process called somatic hypermutation. In the somatic hypermutation, there are several mutations in the B cell is taking place. As a result, it is creating a B cell receptor with high affinity or low affinity. Now, low affinity B cell receptors are not so useful for the body because at the end of the day, the lymph node inside the lymph node they want to create a b cell which is highly reactive towards an antigen and can detect the antigen with higher affinity so the low if affinity uh, b cells would eventually undergo apoptosis and they would be eliminated whereas the high affinity ones would eventually differentiate but before differentiation they would undergo a process known as class switching now normally b cells express the b cell receptor which is membrane bound IgM or sometimes IgT but the plasma cells that they would pr produce they would have a class switching in this class switching the IgM would no longer be expressed and now they would express IgG type or IgA type antibody so that leads to the diversity of uh, responses towards a particular antigen imagine there are so many antigens that is, that is encountered by our body, right? And each of the cases, B cell has to produce antibody against so many different type of antigens with very precise affinity and high interaction. So, and this kind of processes are achieved by class switching and somatic hypermutation. But in this video, we are not going to talk about that in details and I have a separate video on that. But in this video, what we learned is the process of B cell activation, which can either happen in T cell dependent or independent way, and where it happens and what is the consequence of it. And after activation, what are the process? What are the process? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please like this video such that I can reach a bigger audience. And it takes a lot of effort to create this video. So please take your take your time and comment after this video. Thank you.